All right, so in this video, we'll dive deep into soundproofing a room. And I found that looking online just to how to soundproof a room, most people only focus on the wall. And in this video, I'll focus on everything inside the room, not only the wall, but the door and window, because a lot of the time when you're soundproofing the room, a lot of the noise is not coming from the wall. There's minimal to do to the wall, but there's a lot more to do perhaps with the door. So we'll go through everything and we'll go through it as if you were a beginner, because a lot of techniques that we'll be using is something that you can do yourself, DIY, and you don't have to hire somebody. Only a few things that it's probably best to hire somebody to make those changes. So the first thing that you'll need to do before you even begin soundproofing the room is to know what type of noise is that you're trying to soundproof. Is it airborne or is it structural noise? The difference between the noises will make a big difference in what type of material you should use when soundproofing because if you're wanting to soundproof for structural noise, structural noise is basically vibration. Let's say you have the bass on full blast and you feel the noise, you feel the vibration. Also, another good example is if you live in an apartment and you have tenants upstairs or you have tenants downstairs and you don't want to make too much noise, well, that structural noise, the footsteps, is going to have to be soundproofed a lot different than airborne noise where it's just voices. If you're trying to soundproof people talking, noises like that will require a lot less in terms of soundproofing. But if you're trying to soundproof, as I said, for structural and you're using the methods for soundproofing airborne, then you will be very disappointed. So it's good to know what type of noise that you will be wanting to get rid of. So first I'll start with the doors, then windows, and then I'll go through the walls. Now this video is unscripted. I wrote a few notes, but I figured I'll just do it this way and you can let me know in the comment section below if it's actually good. And also it helps with the algorithm for small channels like myself. So I appreciate you leaving a comment and also leaving a like. So the first thing we'll want to soundproof is the door because that big hole in the wall to make you go through it, well that lets in a lot of noises. Just a crack, they say, can let in about 50% of the noise back in. If you don't really believe me or if you think that's a big exaggeration, just go to a window of a busy street and just open it just a little bit. You'll notice that a lot of noise is coming in. Close it and you'll see that the noise is not all gone, but you'll notice a huge difference maybe 50% difference, maybe even more. So before I begin all the materials that I talk about in this video, I'll have links in the description below. And also instead of pointing to different videos on my channel, I'll just have links in the description below of three different playlists, how to soundproof doors, windows, and walls. So you can just go through those playlists and find the specific thing that you want to soundproof for. So beginning with the door, a lot of people might just tell you switch the door Switch your hollow core door with a solid core door. Most doors inside a house are hollow core door, and yes, they'll stop less noise than a solid core door, but before doing that, you should seal the cracks and the gaps around the door and also take care of the big gap on the bottom of the door because by just changing the door and not doing that first, then you're probably not going to be very satisfied and the soundproofing that will go along with just sealing those cracks and gaps is going to work better than just changing the door and not doing anything. First thing that you'll want to do is get some acoustical sealant. Now acoustical sealant is like caulking, but it stays rubbery over time. It's almost like the caulking that you use around your sink. It's rubbery. First thing that you'll want to do is add that around the door casing where the door meets the wall and also where the door meets the casing. Now that gap, you can notice if you have a gap like that, all you need to do is turn off all the lights, turn the light on in the other room and have the door closed. If there's light coming through, then there will be noise coming through also. So seal that gap using acoustical sealant. Now, the next thing that you'll want to do is make sure that that door closes very tightly. Now that that first gap is gone, you'll want to make sure the second gap is no longer there. Now, you'll be able to seal that gap using a weather strip. Now, the weather strip that you see on your screen is a weather strip that you can separate. The width of this separation makes it so you can fit it perfectly in that small casing where the door presses up against it, which will make a tighter seal. This weather strip is self-adhesive and it works very well. Just make sure that it is clean and dry. Install your weather strip around the door casing where the door meets the casing 
and you'll be good. The next gap that you want to take care of is the gap at the bottom of the door. Now, what you'll need here is a bottom door sweep. So if you are soundproofing an interior door, I recommend the U-shaped door sweep. It works very well. It just comes in one length and you just cut it to size. Now that all these gaps are sealed, just listen to see if that worked. If there's too much noise coming through still, then go ahead and change the door to a solid core door. Now, these doors are about double the price than the door that you most likely already have in your home, and you can buy a door Door that looks exactly the same so it's not going to mess up the flow of the home by having a different type of door another alternative to changing the door is by adding a door panel now I find these works better for windows than doors but it all depends on what you're soundproofing for these types of door panels are more for recording studios they do block noise because of the material inside the panel but it does more of a better job at deadening the noise inside the room, so I'd skip those types of panels altogether if you're looking to just soundproof a room in general. All right, so now let's move on to the windows. Now, go ahead and grab your acoustical sealant because you'll need it. Around the window casing, where the casing meets the wall and also where the window meets the casing, if there's a crack, which there probably is because the house will shift over time, and there'll be cracks. It's almost like... Maybe not as many cracks as around the interior door if you're one to get angry and slam that door, but cracks around the windows do happen and acoustical sealant. What's nice with acoustical sealant, as I said, there is a difference between that and caulking. Yes, it does cost more money, but after installing it, you don't have to worry about it cracking. It'll stay rubbery over time for years to come, so you won't have to reapply every year to get rid of those cracks. Now, other than adding a little bit of weather strip, the only thing that you can really do if your window is not closing tight enough is to either replace the weather strip that's already there or add a new one or a second one. It all depends on how your window is built. All windows are different and the weather stripping just might be worn on your window and you just need to replace it and it'll create a better seal. After that, there's not much that you can do with a window. If you have a single pane window, then you should go ahead and replace it with a double or triple pane window because that will make a huge difference on the amount of sound that goes through the glass. But that will require you to call somebody and them come replace the window and that is that can get quite costly, but if the noise that you're trying to soundproof inside your room is coming from the road, then maybe changing the window is not such a bad idea if you already have a single pane window. If you already have a double pane window, then switching from a double to a triple doesn't make as big a difference as going from a single to a double. So as I said, if you tap on your window and it's very thin, then consider replacing the window altogether. You can buy a window panel, something from Indo Windows. They have a type of window panel it's a little bit more expensive. I did do a review if you go into my window playlist and it does block a lot of noise. However, it only blocks a lot of noise if you have a single pane window. If you have a double or triple pane window, it doesn't do that much of a difference. So just know that before going ahead and doing a bunch of research on window panels, if you have a double or triple pane window, it's not really worth it. These window panels are custom made and they are quite costly. But if you are unable to replace your window, if you do have a single pane window, let's say you live in an apartment, then this is a great alternative that allows you to soundproof your window and not have to make any alterations. You can bring that with you or you can sell it to the next tenant that will be moving after you. So that's one way to get rid of it after. You can also use window coverings like sound deadening curtains or soundproof curtains, some people call them, but really they're more like blackout curtains. They'll block more the sun than actually block noise, especially if you just buy regular two panels window coverings because you'll have that split in the middle and also the sides and the top and bottoms, you'll have that gap. Noise is going to come through. So even if the curtain itself is blocking a little bit of the noise, it's not going to make that much of a difference because the noise is just going to come through the sides and the middle. The only way this will work a little bit is if you buy just one panel, you fold it up, you sew it, so you have one 
thick panel that covers the entire window and then you get some industrial velcro you stick the velcro around the window frame and then you sew the other side of the velcro on the curtain and then at least you don't have a huge gap all around the window if you do this yes that will block some noise coming into the window and it might just be enough for you to not go crazy so it's something to think about all right so now we're going to go ahead and soundproof the wall finally and we'll start with a unfinished wall because hopefully if your wall is unfinished it'll allow you to do a lot more in terms of soundproofing and when soundproofing a wall it's not that much difference than soundproofing a door you have to seal all those gaps that are in the wall and you might not think that there are any gaps but there is you see this red blob behind me I've added putty pad on a electrical outlet. Actually, that's not an outlet, that's a light switch. So what putty pad does is it blocks all of the holes inside an electrical outlet box. All of those holes to let those wires in, those holes will let noise right through and you need to cover them, especially on walls with no insulation. Now, if your wall is already finished and you can't really get to the that, then there is something that you can do. Now, as you see on your screen, just remove the faceplate of the electrical outlet. And if the gap isn't too big, you can just add some acoustical sealant to close that gap. But if there is quite a big gap between the electrical box and the drywall, just add a strip of backer rod and then fill the rest with acoustical sealant. Place the electrical outlet face cover back on and that will at least stop some of the noise from coming through. You can actually use I did something in one of my video, a little sound test, sticking this behind the faceplate of an electrical outlet and... So after all of your electrical outlet boxes and your light switches are all covered with putty pad, it's now time to add your insulation. Now the insulation that I would use is acoustical mineral wool. Now some people will tell you that Pink fiberglass is just as good. Well, it's not just as good. Pink fiberglass will work, let's say about 80% to let's say 90% of what acoustical mineral wool will do. That last 10% might be the difference between you hearing and not hearing the noise that bleeds over from all of the other types of soundproofing methods that you will do after installing your insulation. So just think about that. If you're already spending a whole lot of money soundproofing the room to build a recording studio, a home theater, or you just want to not be able to hear your neighbors, then that little 10% that people say you don't really want to waste your money, that might be the difference. So it's up to you. If your budget allows for you to use acoustical mineral wool, if you're just soundproofing a couple of walls, then make sure to use that. If you're going to be soundproofing an entire house, then I would use pink insulation on the rooms that really doesn't matter and the rooms that do matter, that you do really want to have more soundproof, then use the mineral wool in those walls and then you'll be a lot more satisfied. Now, earlier I was talking about the difference between airborne and structural noise. Now, how you soundproof a wall and a ceiling regarding structural noise, if people are walking above you or if you just feel a vibration, let's say for bass on your wall, then what you will want to add is a resilient channel. Now, as you can see on your screen, resilient channel, what it does, it separates the first layer of drywall from the studs. All the vibrations that's coming through the wall is going to be dissipated into the resilient channel and will not go through the wall and you should not hear it. Now, the thing is with a resilient channel, you should really hire somebody to install it because if the screw that goes into the drywall goes through the resilient channel touching the stud, then you've coupled the wall and you've made the entire resilient channel useless. Usually people will install a resilient channel on a ceiling to drown out that footstep noise. So that's where usually resilient channel you'll see better results. Just by adding some on the wall, it'll stop if you are building a media room, but if you're not really trying to soundproof for vibrational noise, skip the whole resilient channel and add your first layer of drywall. Now the drywall that you should use is 5 8 inch drywall. Don't go with the standard half inch drywall. 
just a few dollars more, get a thicker drywall that will block more noise. All right, so now that you have your first layer of drywall installed, it's now time to add your mass loaded vinyl. Now, mass loaded vinyl is a type of a rubbery material and it works really good at not only blocking noise, but also absorbing some of the vibrational noise that would come through the wall. One good thing about mass loaded vinyl is if you buy more, you save, but it's really heavy. It's about one to two pounds per square foot. So just think about it. If you order a huge roll, then you will need a lot of help. Cover your entire wall with mass loaded vinyl. And one little trick that you can use in between the seams of the mass loaded vinyl, add some acoustical sealing just to make sure that the wall is completely sealed. As I said, seal the wall and you will seal the noise. After your mass loaded vinyl is installed, add your second layer of drywall. Make sure again it's 5 8 inch drywall and, and after your drywall is completely installed, before you go ahead and install your baseboard, make sure to seal that small gap using your acoustical sealant. And now let's move on to, well, soundproofing a solid wall. So soundproofing a solid wall, basically you use the same methods after your first layer of drywall. If you do have vibrational noise, one thing that you cannot do is add your resilient channel over the layer of drywall. It just doesn't work that way. You have to add the resilient channel directly on the studs. If you have to soundproof for vibrational noise, you will have to go and remove your drywall to do so. But if you don't want to remove the drywall, just add your mass loaded vinyl, add a second layer of drywall, and that's how you soundproof the wall. You basically do the same steps as you did, but just after your first layer of drywall is installed. And basically, if you're looking to soundproof the ceiling, just use the same methods as soundproofing the wall. And if you're looking to soundproof the floor in your room, usually you go from the ceiling underneath. If you can't get there and you need to soundproof the floor from the floor, just go grab the mass loaded vinyl you're using to soundproof the wall, lay it all across the floor and add your flooring on top of it. If you can't get underneath the floor, you can't really do much more than add mass on top and mass loaded vinyl is very thin. It will absorb a lot of the noise, a lot of the echo that is produced on the floor above. So that's one way to soundproof the floor, but it's easier to soundproof the floor if you can get to the ceiling underneath. So there you have it. Soundproofing a room. Do you think you can do it DIY or do you think you'll need to hire a professional? Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. If something I didn't cover, ask away and I'll do my best to answer. And also leave a like. Appreciate it. Thank you.